Imagine an eight-year-old girl. She loves going to school, but she thinks that there is something wrong with her because she is not learning at the same level or the same way as the ones around her. The lessons are only taught one way and at a rapid pace. She cannot learn and is therefore being set up for failure. My name is Caroline Connell and I was that girl. I went to a traditional elementary school thinking it was such a blast to go to school with all of my close friends and brothers. That was all that I liked about school. It was not the counting or the numbers or the reading, especially not the reading comprehension questions. I remember so very clearly one day being the last one in my class to finish my packet. Many of my friends were a lesson or two ahead of me, and I was still struggling to get my first packet done. My teacher noticed and suggested to my parents to get me tested for dyslexia and learning differences. I started the testing thinking it was fun, but by the end, I left feeling confused, frustrated, and very angry with myself. The testing center quizzed me on what I swear was Harvard material. I would think to myself, they know I'm only eight years old, right? I remember beating myself up about it, but tell by telling myself I was dumb and I just needed to study and work harder. We got the results back from my testing, and it was official. I had learning differences. They explained it to me that I learned differently than everyone else. It meant that there was not something wrong with me, just that my brain gets stuck sometimes, and that's okay. My parents started researching schools and found the joystick. The classes were small, and the teachers would take their time to explain everything and work with me one-on-one. -on -one. I could ask questions without feeling like I was taking away from the other kids in the classroom. I got to do things at my own pace. Every child in my class was working on something different, so there was no pressure to compare myself to my peers. Leaving my prior school, where my friends and siblings were at, to attend the Joy School was one of the hardest things to do. It was also the best decision my parents could have ever made for me. I was finally enjoying school again. I remember once in Mrs. Kimber's class how we learned about nouns, adjectives, adverbs, and verbs. We would use colorful sour candy to make up a sentence. We would tell her our sentence, and if our parts of speech were correct, then we would get to eat the candy as a reward. It was such a fun way to learn, and it made sense to me. I was laughing and having fun in a classroom setting, not because I was with friends this time, but because I was enjoying learning. Every Wednesday, I would go to Mrs. Matthews' room and collect any worksheets that she didn't want. When I got home from school, I'd set up my classroom in the backyard and I'd have over all the little kids in the neighborhood. We'd pull out our worksheets and work with them on both their homework and the worksheets. It was then and there that my love for teaching began. My goal with my students was for them to experience the fun, hands-on learning that the Joy School taught me. I didn't want any child to ever feel the way that I used to feel. I wanted to teach the children in a way they would understand. And if they didn't get it the first time, I would try to teach them differently. I recognized the ability of a teacher to change a child's life and the responsibility that came with it. When I was diagnosed with dyslexia, many learning experts told my parents, she will be lucky to make it through high school and forget about college. As soon as I heard that they didn't think I could succeed in school, I came up with a motto to prove them wrong. I came up with something I would say to myself every day. Dream big, do something about it. <laughs> Who are these people to tell me that I couldn't do this? Who are they to say what my limits are with learning? I made a plan. I was going to graduate college. I was going to be a teacher one day. I thought to myself, what do I have to lose? So with a lot of hard work and effort, I reached my first goal. I graduated high school. My next big dream was not only to go to college, but to graduate as well. I kept saying to myself, dream big, do something about it. After high school, I got into Belmont Abbey College in North Carolina. Through many hours of studying, multiple breakdowns, many sleepless nights, and often feeling like giving up, I made it to the end. I made it to my senior year, and I was so proud of myself. I graduated on May 13, 2017, with a bachelor's degree in education studies. I was finally on my way to becoming a teacher.
school exams were over, and the fun part had started. After many interviews, I heard back from Ellen Bass, the head of St. Martin's High School. She offered me my dream job, and I am now a teacher there and having the time of my life. I cannot most challenging and rewarding job I've ever had. I've had such a lot for coming into work every day and being with my kids. I've had to get through many hurdles in my life with school and not being able to understand things as quickly as I should, but I would not change the fact that I have learning differences for anything in the entire world. I am who I am today because of my failures in a traditional school. I would not have found a joy school and I may not have learned to work hard and set goals in the way that I do now. I would not have found a passion for teaching, and most importantly, I would not have met a lot of the friends and supporters that I have in my life today. I really appreciate everyone that has been there supporting me for the past 25 years. I am where I am today because of you. If you take anything away from what I've said today, it should be that you can do and be anything you want to be. You can chase your dreams. If you're willing to work hard, sometimes really hard, the sky is the limit. So go out there and dream big and do something about it. <laughs>